my name's Keegan Sowen. Trampoline gymnastics is my sport. 28 years old, Red Deer, Alberta. I was part of the Canadian team for both the 2012 and the 2016 Olympics uh, in Rio and London. Uh, I was alternate there and I got to travel and be a part of the team still, so that was a good experience. I went with my father as my coach there for that, and then I also went with Dave Ross and Jason Burnett and Karen Coburn and Rosie McLennan. Oh, and Samantha Smith. <laughs> uh, I've been doing gymnastics now competitively for about 21 years. Favorite event, individual trampoline. <laughs> I think just walking through the athlete's village, getting to, to interact with all the other athletes from not just Canada, but, but from everywhere, and just seeing how the, everybody eating together, training together, living together was just, just awesome. In 2012, it was kind of a, it was the first one I had been to, and I, I wasn't really expecting to be selected for the team, even though I came really, really, really close. So I was just kind of happy to be there. And I think just walking around London and I had a, a great time just experiencing the city and, and coming across other athletes and stuff. But I think when it came to Rio 2016, the chance that I was going to have to compete was a lot higher because Jason was, was jumping on uh, kind of a no ACL knee thing. So they're kind of saying, you know, you gotta be, gotta be really ready for this. We might have to pull him out at any second. And I said, well, Okay, I'll be ready. So I think that one went in with a little bit more, the, the training and everything was a little bit more intense while we were there. One of my favorites from last world championships, it was in the team final and I was in the second round, but the order in the first round went one country, Canada, and then the next country. And so I assumed that that order would stay the same for the second round, but turns out it changed for how placing was in the, in the first round. So. After the one country went up, that was first in the first round, they got to go up again. I assumed it was my turn to get up on the trampoline, so I walked up and Gao Lei, who is world champion and Olympic medalist and all this stuff, he's, get, he's chalking up his hands in the bucket. And I went up and, oh, whatever, excuse me, and I did a little bit of chalk up, and I went up onto the tramp before him. And I was standing there getting ready for my turn, and then the judges all look at me kind of kind of funny, and I was going, what? what? What are you guys looking at, right? And then they kind of, they waved me off the tramp, and I'm, Oh, oh, okay, I step off and then turns out it was Galay's turn. So he comes by, he chuckles, he gives me a little, uh, little pat on the back. And I, I walk back and I was like, why did nobody tell me that it wasn't my turn, you know? So I think that was one of my, the most recent one that really sticks out to me. Maybe not the hardest challenge I've had to overcome, but, but one of the bigger ones is just being from a smaller town and especially from a smaller province like Alberta, where not as many people live. There's just a little bit of the, the stereotypical, oh, you, you must not be a, as good at this because you come from a small town. Shouldn't you be living in, you know, even, even Calgary or, uh, or Toronto? And you're like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm at the top of, top of the sport, but I just happen to be from a, from a small place. The biggest advice I'd have for, uh, for an athlete uh, looking to compete at the Olympics would probably be, people are always going to tell you maybe you're, you're not good enough or you, you're not going to be able to get to that level, but I think the biggest one is you just got to believe in yourself and uh, uh, keep, keep striving for it. If that's really what you want to do, remember why you want to do it and uh, just go for it. If any athletes are struggling with certain skills or maybe combination of skills, it's always best to just go back to what you've learned previously because all skills build, build upon each other. So as long as you can go back to the step before where you're at and you're having trouble with, if you get that really confident, then you'll, uh, you'll have success in the stuff you're struggling with. It's been great, you know, growing up in the family and, and everybody's a part of the same sport, same opportunities and things. I think it's just been, I try to think about how I would have done it without it. And I just, I, I can't imagine it really because we've always been together and through all the ups and downs, you're, you've always got your family right there next to you. So it's been, it's just been great. We were such a good pairing, I think, because we trained together and grew up together that we kind of knew, our, we had a similar style and we knew our styles. And I think over, over the years, there's only been maybe two, three other pairs of brothers that have ever done synchronized trampoline. And we actually had one competition where we had 
a pair of brothers from the US and a pair of brothers from Australia and we all competed at the same competition. It was kind of, <laughs> we were pretty much all the competitors and we were like, hey, look at this, this is <laughs> uh, an unheard of event. I still train competitively, I'm still on the, the Canadian national team, uh, but I also, I coach a lot and I'm having fun coaching the next generation so far and it's, uh, it's been nice to pass on what I've learned through my competition experience and what I'm still learning. Yeah, right, right now we're waiting on, we just had the last qualification meet in Italy and we're waiting to see if Canada gets a spot and then after that I'll most likely be alternate again judging by how the points are so it's, it's kind of a funny situation I guess but yeah still training hard and hopefully if I am uh, selected I'll put my best effort forward.